Hello and welcome to the introduction to Standing Waves. Split Standing Waves up into a couple of different, hopefully short, vodcasts um, that cover the topic at standard level. So we're going to be pretty much looking at the whole of uh, Standing Waves in this vodcast, at least from an introductory perspective. I've put the guidance up here because I think it is quite important uh, for Standing Waves and there aren't any... Uh, really associated equations for standing waves except perhaps cf equals f lambda which we've met before so what is a standing wave well a standing wave is well it's one of these here we have two traveling waves but when they meet you'll see they undergo superposition when they undergo superposition they form this standing wave which has a very different characteristic or some different characteristics to the traveling waves that made it most of the time, you don't actually have two separate sources that come together to form a standard wave. Instead, well, it can happen. Instead, um, it's quite common to have a single wave source, which then reflects uh, and uh, interferes or superimposes with itself. Uh, it's a very fast video um, of, uh, of two, again, two traveling waves passing by each other and producing a standing wave. So some vocabulary associated with standing waves. So unlike the traveling waves, and you can see on the right there the blue and the green both traveling waves, every point on a traveling wave will be varying its displacement all of the time, and at some time every point will have maximum displacement, the amplitude. That's not true for the wave on the left. Where you can see the nodes, those have an amplitude of zero. Those points never actually move up and down away from the, the, the equilibrium position, whereas at the antinodes they have a very large amplitude. So amplitude varies across one complete uh, wavelength or uh, one complete phase of the wave. So zero amplitude nodes, maximum amplitude antinodes. That's very important vocabulary for dealing with standing waves. So We've outlined a couple of differences here between traveling or progressive waves and standing waves. In traveling waves, you can sort of like, um, if you're drawing a graph of it, that graph will progress and change with time in terms of moving in one direction or another. Um, in standing waves, that's not so. The profile is stationary. The, the, the waves will grow and shrink, but the actual profile doesn't change. The nodes and the antinodes will not change their position. Traveling waves is an energy transfer. That's one of the most common definitions of a wave is that it transfers energy. Whereas in standing waves, there is no energy transfer. Theoretically, once a standing wave is going, if there are no energy losses, it will keep on going forever because it's not transferring energy anywhere. In reality, however, if you think about common situations involving standing waves, which we'll be looking at soon, they all do sort of lose energy to their surroundings and therefore either are temporary in nature or they have to be replenished, they have to have energy put into the system to keep them going. The point about amplitude that we've been mentioning, and also uh, the uh, point of phase. In a traveling wave, the phase varies along, whereas in a standing wave, all nodes um, are in phase, or points between nodes are in phase. What that means is that they will all reach, they have different amplitudes, but they will all reach their maximum or minimum amplitude at the same time. Here we have some common visual representations of um, standing waves, and you'll see that they sort of show the, the maximum and minimum uh, displacements or amplitudes as they go along the wave, and identifying uh, the points where they uh, cross or go to zero as being the nodes and the points in between antinodes. And below you'll see the animations that correspond to these uh, diagrams. And here you have some, some more examples. And here we'll introduce a little bit more vocabulary. Because if you have a certain length, L, of a vibrating oscillator, such as, for example, the uh, cable or string or, 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 or whatever you want to call it in the photograph on the bottom right, and then you uh, induce, by maybe vibrating one end, um, you induce a standing wave, 
then there are different ways that it can vibrate. One way is to uh, have just nodes at each end. By the way, if you are actually physically actively vibrating, then the very end won't be a node uh, because that's the part that's having the energy put into it. But then there'll be a, a node very close to the end. We call that the end correction or the, the end effect. Um, so yeah, so the most simple is called the first harmonic, sometimes called the fundamental, but the IB in the guidance says we should call it the first harmonic which has uh, one node at each end and an anti-node. You'll notice that the wavelength of that la wave um, from left to right is going to be twice its length. If we want to do a complete up and then down, we have to go for twice the length. We'll be looking at this more in detail in the next video. The second harmonic has uh, three nodes and the third harmonic has four nodes and so on. So the number of harmonic is the same as the number of anti-nodes and uh, one less than the number of nodes. Uh, the other thing the IB says we have to specify is boundary conditions. Um, so the boundary conditions for stringed instruments tend to be nodes at each end. I mean, theoretically, you could have it with anti-nodes or, or so on, but, but most of the time with stringed instruments, it's uh, nodes at each end. Um, whereas for uh, pipes, the uh, most common one, I would say, is to have a node at one end and an anti-node at the other. So in, say, a wind instrument, which is one application of standing waves like the trombone there, the closed end, once you've got your mouth in the mouthpiece, that's a closed end, is a node and the open end is an anti-node. Well, there are... Well, we'll see uh, an example with um, antinodes at both ends, such as the uh, flute. Um, it'd be difficult to sort of picture this because it's easy enough to picture with string what it actually looks like, but what does it actually look like with wind instruments? And so this Dan Russell animation is fantastic for that. And you can see the uh, movement of the particles matched to the graphs below, which show the particles moving left or right, or the pressure, which produces a different graph, but they're both standing wave graphs. Um, and you'll notice that the displacement graph, which is what is we use for defining nodes and antinodes, there is a node on the right-hand side, but these particles are not actually moving themselves. Similarly, there's a node here. These particles barely move or, or don't move if they're directly on there, and that's true for all of the nodes. Whereas for the anti-nodes, they do move backwards and forwards, and their maximum displacement, the ones that are moving most, the ones that have the greatest amplitude, are the ones in the anti-node regions here. And the far end is an anti-node. And that's important because with sound waves, you want this to have what's effectively a vibrating surface here because it's going to be pushing the air molecules to the left in this diagram which will be spreading out the sound waves to uh, people to hear it. Uh, another application and um, uh, we can look at some video of this is uh, in two-dimensional surfaces such as a metal plate but also the same principle could be used in a speaker etc. Uh, so this is called a ch child, Chaldney, Chaldney um, plate, apologies for the pronunciation, and the idea is that you can show the vibration and the standing waves by vibrating the plate through a um, column which is attached in the middle here, makes it go up and down, and it doesn't happen at all frequencies, but at certain frequencies due to something called resonance, which is actually part of the engineering physics topic, at certain frequencies, some areas of a plate will not vibrate. They will be nodes. And they're indicated by whether rice or salt or whatever has been spread on the plate. It will tend to stay in these nodes because these don't move, whereas the area in the center, obviously, because that's what's going pushed up and down, but also these areas around are anti-nodes. They move up and down, and the rice or salt is pushed away from those areas of the plate. I think we can briefly see, I'm not going to show the whole thing, but some video of that. Nice quote from Tesla. So yeah, so we have the um, a vibration generator here, which can, you can change the frequency of vibration. And it's attached to a pump here, which is attached to the plate in the center. We choose certain values of the frequency, so 100 hertz is 100 oscillations per second. 
you add the particles, the salt grains or the rice, and then you um, vibrate the plate. Get on with it. As I say, it only works for certain frequencies. But what happens is, there you go, very pretty. You have these, you have these nodes and the antinodes, and different frequencies will produce different um, patterns on the plate. Okay. You can see the full video another time. So, yep, yeah, so we've looked at the nature of standing waves. We've talked about boundary conditions, what happens at the edges, so to speak. Uh, we've looked at nodes and antinodes as part of those definitions. Okay, thank you very much.